Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to simulate these rotating plates. There are two methods of doing that. One is dynamic mesh and other one is the sliding mesh. In this tutorial, I am going to compare the simulation results of these two methods. Let's get started. By the way, in the description, I have included Amazon links for some good CFT books and useful tools. Using these links also support the channel. In this video, I will show you the workflow only for the sliding mesh. As for the dynamic mesh, I have already uploaded a tutorial where I have shown you how you can use dynamic mesh for rotating body, which is over here. Also, this tutorial I am starting from these blades. I have created these blades in my previous video, which is over here, move and mirror tool in space clip. So you can check these two videos. For the simulation, we need outer body around these blades. For that, go to the design, select sketch and click on this surface to select this as a plane. Now we can create a rectangle around these blades and with this dimension tool we can set our dimension. From here to here I am using 70 millimeter. From here to here this one is also 70. From center till here 80. Back side is 250. We have our rectangle, we can go back to 3D mode. Now we have to subtract these blades from this surface. As you can see, we have this rectangle over here. There are different ways of doing that. First, uh, we can use one method, which is prepare and use this imprint. We are creating an imprint of these blades on the rectangle. Click this tick mark, hide this surface, and you can see imprint has created. You can select this central surface and simply delete from your keyboard. We need another circle around these blades as that circle will be rotating into this outer body. Now in sliding mesh, we always have two regions. One is in the inner region, one is outer region. Inner region rotates and the outer region remains still at its position. For that, let's go back again to design, sketch. This surface has already been selected. Select circle and we need a circle of 66 millimeter. There is a reason for that, which I will show you in the next video. For the time being, the radius of circle is 10% longer than the length of these blades. This circle has created as a separate body, which you can see over here. We have to divide this body into this inner part. For that, we will use other method, which is in design. And you can say combine. Select this one and select this plate tool and your other body. Now hide this circle and you can see we have these two bodies. Uh, for that first delete this one from your keyboard and select this one and you can say detach. And it has created two surfaces over here. We can see this and this. Let me say suppress these two which are not shown. We will use these two bodies for our simulation. Now we can move to our meshing tool and to our meshing. We are now in meshing module. We can start from here. First of all, this inner region, we can call it inner fluid. And this one we can call outer fluid. As I said earlier, this one is the sliding mesh. So in sliding mesh, this inner fluid will rotate as a rigid body and outer full fluid will remain stationary. Then we have to check the connection. So we need a connection between these two fluid and that has been created automatically let's check this connection it has created as a surface connection but it should be as a edge connection because this one is 2d simulation it should be this edge and we can say contact and the other one this blue one the target body we can select this edge from here and we can select target face over here now you can see the contact has been created I also have another detailed video about the context creation. You can also check that one if you do not know about this connection handling. Here I am doing automatic generating connection is no. The reason is that if I will close this meshing and will come back, so it will retain my connection. If I will say yes, so it will rewrite this connection again and again. Now we need some name selection. This one we can say inlet 
the shortcut key is the N on the keyboard which means I just select this one and press N on my keyboard this one is the outlet and these inner edges we can say all the edges have been selected M and I can call them blades that's it uh, we can create a mesh the mesh is pretty coarse so we can use some mesh setting first of all let's say we need inflation layers and the inflation layers we want to create on this body and here we will select name selection and we will select our plates and i want to have eight layers second one i need a sizing the mesh sizing on the inner one i would say element size is one millimeter on the outer one which we can set from here like sizing or we can set this global sizing i'm just saying it should be 10 so maximum will be 10 millimeter and minimum will be different then further i want to add some edge sizing for that i will say sizing let me hide this one and i will select this edge from here and i will say this edge and this edge sizing number of elements i will say number of division and these uh, should be 200 okay i can say inverse visibility now other body has been displayed select this edge say meshing sizing insert sizing the mesh should not be conformal so we can use different element sizes it could be little less let me say 160 now we can generate our mesh and see how our mesh looks like let me show all bodies select mesh and that's how our mesh looks like and it looks fine we can make this one little bit uh, finer or you can leave as it is yes here pretty coarse we can make it little finer actually this sizing was 200 we can call it 250 this one was 160 we can call it 200 growth rate is 1.2 you have seen that mesh is uh, growing really fast we can increase sorry decrease growth rate we can say 1.1 now we can say generate mesh and we can see our mesh looks better if you want to have this finer mesh little longer you can further reduce this growth rate but i think this one is fine and we can move to our fluent to see the sliding mesh setting we are in fluent and we can start our simulation setup in general i want to have energy equation on because i will be providing some temperature on this inner wall to see the temperature distribution in this region okay it should be a transient simulation i am not changing anything in turbulent model because that is not the purpose of this video and after that we will be in cell zone or before that material material is here we will be using air and then cell zone inner fluid okay in sliding mesh in inner fluid you have to check this mesh motion i have selected this mesh motion now you can set the rotational speed so it is in radian per second you can set whatever velocity you like so i am setting minus 10 radian per second so it will be in clockwise direction that's it that's what we needed over here apply and close on the outer fluid we do not need to check mesh motion because as i said the outer region will be stationary and we will close then boundary condition inlet velocity i will set let's say 2 meter per second and thermal i want to set 25 degrees celsius which is 298.15 apply and close if you like in units you can change the unit so i'm leaving kelvin as it is then in wall i will be applying on the blades because uh, these are the outer boundary of these blades and uh, as i said before i will be applying some temperature so let's say these blades are at 500 
Kelvin. It means there will be a heat transfer from these plates to the outer region. This wall is the moving wall. It will be rotating. So I will check rotational motion. Relative to adjacent cell zone will be zero. It means the rotational motion of this wall will be same as this inner fluid. I will say apply and close. That's it. We do not have any other setting in here. Now we can move further. One thing I want to set up uh, the outlet temperature. For that, I want to say report definition new surface report mass weighted average. I want to record the outlet temperature because for dynamic mesh and the sliding mesh, I want to compare the outlet temperature for two cases. I am saying outlet temperature, mass weighted average temperature total temperature and it should be on the outlet here and I will be recording this one as a file and I will also be displaying as a plot. There is also a detailed video about report file and report plot which you can check on my channel. Now we can say we want to initialize standard initialization through inlet and I will be initializing. My solution has been initialized. And now I want to do some animation setup and also auto save. If you like, you can save your simulation at time step, whatever you like. I'm not saving any time step, but I will be saving some animation. Let me call animation pressure. And here I don't have pressure. You can create from here new object and contour. I can call it pressure, total pressure, and I will be selecting all these surfaces close and this one has created now my animation has been created and i will be recording every third time step pressure i will say okay i am saving these three animation which i can see later and now i will go to the run calculation number of time step i will say 500 and my time step size 0 0.005 maximum iteration per time step let's say 100 so because each time step will converge under 100 iteration now our simulation setup has been finished we can run our simulation i will not run the entire simulation i will just show you that it is running because i have already Results, I will show you the results directly after showing that it is working. You can see simulation has started and it is working fine. And you can also see our blade is moving. This one is the pressure contour. Here is our velocity contour. And you can see these blades are moving. Temperature contour. And here is our outlet temperature which is changing like that. I have also run simulation for dynamic mesh. Now let me show you the results for these two and let's see what is the difference for these two simulation. What I did this simulation setup in dynamic mesh and this sliding mesh is exactly the same. I mean the time step size, the number of time steps, the velocity, temperature, everything was same. There are few differences. I tried to maintain the mesh size as close as possible but there was one difference i did not use any inflation layer in dynamic mesh in this comparison anyway let me pull the result and then i will show you what are the differences between dynamic mesh and sliding mesh okay here is the simulation result for the dynamic mesh let me show you how dynamic mesh look like uh, i'm running this animation and you can see that's how dynamic mesh was running and now let me show you the pressure field for both sliding mesh and dynamic mesh. For the comparison of sliding mesh and dynamic mesh, I have created this short video on my channel. And you can see the pressure field at the exact same time for sliding mesh and dynamic mesh. This pressure field looks similar. Oh, I don't see much difference in the pressure field, but there is a difference in the outlet temperature for both cases which I will show you shortly. Here is the outlet temperature for both dynamic mesh and sliding mesh. This blue line is for sliding mesh and this uh, brown line is for dynamic mesh. The temperature profile looks same 
but there is an offset almost of uh, 0.5 degree that means dynamic mesh is predicting little bit higher temperature i cannot say which one is closer to reality but uh, one thing is that there was no inflation layer in dynamic mesh so might be possible that the we do not have the proper thermal boundary layer because the thermal boundary layer has the impact on the heat transfer so it might be possible in the absence of thermal boundary layer simulation is predicting little bit higher temperature but the pressure field and velocity field were close enough i do not have any experimental setup to check that one i will try to verify which one is more closer to experimental setup but i think within the marginal error we can use both dynamic mesh and sliding mesh for rotating body but the setup for sliding mesh is uh, easier and also the simulation time is lower for the sliding mesh i think when you have rotating board it makes more sense to use sliding mesh than dynamic mesh in the next video i will make a comparison of this inner fluid region in this case i have used the inner fluid region has the 10 percent length higher than the blade in the next video i will use different region let's say 20 percent 30 percent and 40 percent and see how this inner region impact the simulation results that's it for today i hope you found this tutorial helpful thanks for watching and see you in the next video